Buenas noches, mis amigos. It's time for another night of Bible time. Now, don't forget before we get started how you can earn some points. The daily Bible reading, memorizing your memory verse, filling out the paper each night, and forget, don't forget, you can't lose those boys and girls. And then last of all, bring a visitor when we come to your backyard Bible time. All right, let's enjoy the show.
Our theme song for our virtual Bible time is Obedience. So why don't you stand up and the lyrics will be right above our heads and sing Obedience with us. Hello boys and girls, how are you doing? I hope you've had a great week. I hope your day has been good. This week we have been talking about doing what is right. And tonight's lesson, we're gonna be getting into it right now. And we're gonna be talking about using the right words. But before I go into the story, let's go over our memory verse for tonight. It is Ephesians 4.29 and I'm gonna say it and then I'm going to explain the verse to you, and then I want you to say it with me. It's Ephesians 4:29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. All right? The first part of this verse says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Now, God, he does not want us to be saying anything bad. So that's what that first part is saying. He does not want any uh, corrupt communication proceeding out of our mouth. He does nothing, he wants nothing bad. Now the second part of our verse is, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Edify means to build someone up, to make them stronger, to encourage them. So God, he wants you to say things that build up or encourage others. So that second part of the verse is telling, God is telling you he wants you to encourage others. The first part of that verse, he's telling you what not to do as far as saying bad things. And the second part, he is wanting you to do what's right and to edify and to encourage others. So let's say this verse together. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Let's do it one more time. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever said anything, and after you said it, you were like, oh, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I take it back, I take it back. No, no, forget I ever said anything. Has that ever happened to you? Well, it's happened to me plenty of times. There have been times where I, after I've said something, I wish I didn't say that. Oh, no, what am I going to do now, type of thing. Well. You know what? We all know that, that we can't erase what we have just said. We can't take that back. We can't pretend that it never happened. Once those words are out, the, the people that are around you have heard it. Words are powerful. When used in a good way, words encourage the person hearing them. But when they are used in the wrong way, words can hurt. It is so important that we choose right words. 
Have you ever heard the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me? I, I'm sure you might have said that to someone after they've called you a name, or they said something hurtful to you, or maybe they even said that back to you because you, did that, you said something hurtful to them. Well, you know what? When you think about that phrase, it's not so true. Because when you get hit by a stick or a stone, it might hurt for just a little bit, but then that pain goes away, doesn't it? And we completely forget about it. We, even compl we forget what the pain even felt like. But when words, hurtful words, mean names being called to me, and, and that is more painful to me, and I can't forget those words. Those words don't go away. They're painful. So to me, being called a name or having something said to me that's so hurtful is more painful than a stick or a stone. We need to allow God to help us say the right words. Today, we are going to learn about choosing right words as we talk about the life of Peter. Now, this is Peter, and he was one of Jesus' disciples. For three years, Peter followed Jesus, learning from him, helping him, watching him perform miracles. Peter believed that Jesus was the Son of God, and he even told Jesus that he believed that. One night, Jesus, Peter, and the other disciples were walking. And as they were walking, Jesus stopped and looked at all 12 of his disciples, and he said, Tonight, you all will turn away from me. Well, the disciples, I'm sure, were all thinking, What? What does Jesus mean? We've been following him all these years, and now he's saying we're going to turn away from him? And Peter, he blurted right out, Oh, no, Jesus, I would never do that. The others might do that, but I will never do that. Well, Jesus, knowing what was going to happen, and said in a very sweet voice to Peter, he said, Peter, before the rooster crows in the morning, you will deny me three times. Now, to deny me means that Peter would say he never knew him. That's what deny means. Well, Peter, he insisted, no, no, I would never do that to you, Jesus. I would never deny you. Well, just a few hours later, Jesus' words came true. A group of religious leaders, which were Jesus' enemies, they arrested him and they took him away. Now, Jesus, he did nothing wrong, but he was being arrested by these men. These men, they hated Jesus, and they wanted to see him killed. So they made a plan, and they arrested him. Well, Jesus didn't do anything wrong, and you know what the disciples did when they took him away? They ran away. They ran away, just like Jesus said. He said, you tonight will turn away from me. That's what the disciples did. But Peter, however, he didn't run away. He followed Jesus and the others, but he followed them from a far distance, sort of like he was just kind of creeping along way behind where they couldn't see him to see where they were taking him. So outside the palace where Jesus was taken, Peter waited in the courtyard with some servants. One of the servants girls noticed and recognized Peter, and she said, you, you are with Jesus. Oh, Peter's heart must have been pounding. He didn't want to be recognized and possibly arrested too. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. <gasps> Number one. Then a second servant girl came and said, this man, this man was with Jesus. And Peter says, no, I never knew him. <gasps> Number two. Well, later on, at the third servant girl noticed Peter, and she says, you, you were with Jesus. I know you were. You even speak like he does. Peter, he got so angry, and he just blurted out, no, I never knew him. <gasps> Number three. What had Peter just done? He had three opportunities to speak up for Jesus, but instead he denied ever knowing him. Peter did not allow God to control his words. He got angry and he said things that were not right. 
Do you ever get angry and say things that aren't right? God has the power to help you. Remember, like I said earlier, words that are said the right way can encourage someone, but words that are said the wrong way can hurt someone. People often remember the bad things that are said to them much longer than they remember the good things. Let's think about gossiping about someone. That's using our words wrong. Saying unkind things like, <laughs> Megan, do you know about Megan? She, she got three words right on her test. Can you believe that? Only three words right. Oh, isn't that funny? I can't believe that. <gasps> That is so unkind. And even though that might be true, that is so cruel. Think about it. First of all, she would be so embarrassed that you're talking about that with other, other friends of hers. But then she would be so hurt. It would be such a pain in her heart to hear those unkind words. But let's think about the right way. We could be encouraging, right? Like God says in our verse, he wants you to edify others. He wants you to encourage others. So you think about it. Oh, Megan, I'm so sorry that that, that, you, that happened, but you know what? Don't give up. Try harder next time. And if you want me to, I'll help you study for that test next week. That's the right response of, um, when something happens like that. Well, going back to our story, Peter, he denied Jesus three times, and the rooster crowed. And just like that, Peter remembered what Jesus told him. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said, Peter, before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. And that's exactly what Peter did. And Peter was so upset with himself that he ran out of that courtyard and he cried. He hit himself and he cried and he was so sorry for what he had just done. He was so sorry he ever denied Jesus. He was, wish he could take it all back. But he wanted to even see Jesus and tell him he was sorry. But you know what? He couldn't. It was too late because the next day, Jesus was hanging on a cross. See, remember I told you those men came to arrest him and they were hoping that they could get him killed? Well, they sure did. That's what happened. And now he is hanging on a cross. Peter did not understand it at the time, but Jesus had come to earth for this very reason. Jesus came to take the punishment for the sin of everyone on earth. We all sin. Sin is wanting our way instead of ours, our, our, instead of God's way. It is when we say, think, or do something wrong, telling a lie, being cruel. You, we were, you and me, we were all born with a desire to sin. In the Bible, God says there is none righteous, no, not one. There is no one on this earth that's perfect, none. But because God is perfect, he, he has to uh, punish sin. God's punishment is separation from him forever. But God who created you and God who loves you, he sent his son Jesus to earth to take the punishment for us. But you know what? Jesus, he may have died on that cross, but you know what happened the third day? Later, Three days later, he rose. He arose out of that tomb. He was not there. He had risen. Jesus is alive. He was alive then, and he's alive now in heaven. Jesus died on the cross and came back to life as part of God's plan. You see, this was God's plan all along. You know how at Christmas time we celebrate the birth of Jesus? Well, even then, God had a plan, and this was his plan. The Bible says that Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and he rose again the third day. Jesus did this to save you from sin's punishment and make you a new person. And you can have the power to say no to sin and choose to do right and say the right words. Because Jesus is alive, you can live forever with him in heaven someday if you choose to call on him to save you. The Bible tells us that after Jesus came back to life, Peter and the other disciples saw Jesus several times. 
For 40 days, Jesus remained here on earth. Peter was able to ask Jesus to forgive him. And you know what Jesus did? He forgave him. How happy that must have made Peter feel. What a difference this made in Peter's life. Before Jesus went up into heaven, he told Peter and the other disciples that they need to tell everyone how to be saved. Jesus promised that God would give them the power to speak about him through the Holy Spirit. And that is exactly what he does for us today. He gives us the power to be able to tell our friends about Jesus. And after that, Peter was changed because now Peter stood before the crowd and began to speak. Through God's power, Peter spoke about the Lord Jesus. He told them how it had been God's plan for Jesus to die and rise again so that our sins could be forgiven. What a change in Peter. He was allowing God to control his words. As Peter spoke to the people listening, many of them were listening, and many of them eagerly responded. As a result of hearing Peter's words, about 3,000 people believed in Jesus, and they were saved. Later, Peter spoke letters to the Christians, encouraging them. And you know what? Those same words of Peter's can be an encouragement to us today because we find those letters in the New Testament of our Bible. Peter's life teaches us to do what's right by letting God control our words. If you know Jesus as your Savior, will you do what's right by letting God control your words? The next time you feel like saying, angry words or gossiping, you need to stop and remember these four powerful words. Number one, think. Stop and ask yourself, would God say that? You see, if you get angry and you want to speak mean to somebody, if you just stop in your track and think about it and say, would God say that? That would help. Number two, Say. Say a memory verse. Memorize verses so then when that moment you need it, it's there. And we can even think of the verse for tonight. Ephesians 4.29, let's say that together again. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy, your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Number three, pray. Pray and ask God for help that you can say the kind and right words. If you, even when you get up in the morning, before you even get out of bed, just say, God, I need your help today. Could you please help me to say the right words instead of the wrong words? And he will help you. Number four, obey. Obey by using kind words to encourage others. Because you see, when you use kind words to en and encourage somebody else, you're obeying God, because that's exactly what God wants you to do, just like our verse said. Now, you can't ask God to help you control your words until you first call on him to save you from your sins. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. To call on the name of the Lord means to believe, to put your complete trust in Jesus who died on the cross, saving you from punishment you deserve. You can turn from sin and call on the name of the Lord to be saved right now. Then, instead of being separated from God forever, you will live with him in heaven someday. So, boys and girls, I sure hope that this lesson has been an encouragement to you and to help you remember that it is so much more important to say the right words, to choose. You're going to choose today to say those right words instead of the bad ones. And that this life of Peter can be an example because he went from denying Christ to boldly speaking for Christ. And he had no fear now. He was ready and he was willing to do what God wanted him to do. I just want you right now where you're at, wherever you might be watching this video, I want you just to close your eyes. And I'm just going to say a prayer for you tonight. Lord, I thank you 
so much for each boy and girl that wanted to hear this lesson tonight. I pray that you would just help them, Lord, to have learned something from the life of Peter. And that, and even though we might fail one day, Lord, you'll forgive us and help us the next day. And Lord, I pray that you would encourage these boys and girls, as I know they want to be back here at church. And Lord, I just pray that they remember to trust you through all of this and that to remember that you love them and to know that the people at New Life Baptist Church loves them too, and we can't wait for them to get back. So, Lord, we just thank you for your love, and I just pray that you would just encourage these kids tonight. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight for Bible Time. We hope that you had an awesome time and that you learned some really important truths from the Word of God. We want to encourage you to join us tomorrow night and invite somebody else to be back with you at 6.30 p.m., both on Facebook and also on YouTube. If you have questions about how to know for sure that you're going to go to heaven someday when you die, or if there's something we could pray with you about, or you'd like to learn more about New Life Baptist Church, be sure to give us a call or send us an email at the information listed below. We'll see you tomorrow night for another night of virtual Bible time.